I'm trying to, uh, I'll, I'll try to present some network problem statements that we often come across in our daily lives of, of being a network engineer. And how we solve these problems using Python in, in our network. So I'm Nawful Jamal. I'm just a staff network engineer at LinkedIn. I've been with LinkedIn for six years. And till two years back, I was like a typical network engineer working day in, day out for different uh, network uh, prop, uh, operations problem. Two years back, I realized how Python is actually changing the world for network engineers, how it is making lives easy for network engineers. So I'm trying to, I'll, I'll try to showcase some examples that we have uh, put in LinkedIn network. So let's start. OK, so that's, uh, that's the agenda for today. So some common daily network problem statements. And the second one is like challenges in network troubleshooting. So when we talk about network troubleshooting, uh, when you have a big network and when you uh, are bombarded with complaints of, hey, we are experiencing latency, we are experiencing jitter between these applications. So you sometimes don't know where to start looking from, like where the issue could be. So we solved that problem using a utility called Li Traceroute, okay, which is a network scanning utility. And the next challenge is network maintenance. So we all know like being a network engineer, we have to do code upgrades, we have to do complex network maintenances, routing changes in the network. And sometimes we are not sure that, hey, whatever maintenance that I did, did it actually go well or did it break anything? That kind of thing. So we solved that challenge using a tool called NetSmart. That is Network Simplified Maintenance and Reporting Tool. And the last problem statement is like device decommissioning. So we had a challenge of uh, decommissioning two data centers in a very short span of time. So we wrote a tool called Device Decom Tool. And with that tool, we were able to uh, decommission two full-scale data centers in just three days. So I'll show the use case for that as well. And then uh, open source plans. So th these tools have helped us. So we really would like to extend this to the community. And I'll share my open source plan for these tools. So yeah. So challenges in network troubleshooting. So when a latency, when an issue like latency or delay happens in your network, like uh, you have so many monitoring systems, you have monitoring graphs, you have a lot of uh, syslogs, and in a big network, it can often get confusing, like where to get started from. You actually try to pinpoint, like, okay, this might be the issue, or this might be the issue. Sometimes the data is so much that you're not able to correlate, and that increases the MTTR, that is mean time to resolve for a network issue, because you, parse the logs, you parse the graphs, or your monitoring systems, and then you try to identify issue, it, it increases the MTTR. And when you have a multi-vendor network, like you have Cisco, Juniper, Arista in your network, and different platforms may have different kinds of issue or different kinds of bugs, so that also makes a tr troubleshooting a very challenging thing. Now, how do we correlate the data that we have in different systems like syslogs, graphs, or whatever monitoring uh, utility that you have, how do we correlate all this data and show it in a single place saying, hey, so when you run this utility, this is the uh, uh, network issues found by that utility. So we want something which correlates data from all these APIs or from the device itself and show you in a single place so that the engineer doesn't have to look at different places like looking at the device, looking at the logs, looking at the graph. It doesn't have to do that. This tool is going to scrape the APIs this tool is going to scrape the CLIs of those two uh, devices and show you the report. OK, say, hey, so these are the issues. So we needed something like that. So Li Traceroute, it's actually a network scanning utility which can scan any piece of your network in the least amount of time. So for example, if I want to say, hey, I want to see, like, uh, are there any issues with the Juniper devices on my network? So I can just tell this uh, utility, hey, just scan all the Junipers in my network. Or I can see, say, hey, simply scan all the Arista in my network or scan this data center. So based on whatever input that you give to that uh, utility, it's going to scan the entire, uh, that piece of network and show you if there are any issues or there. So, yeah. So this, this tool is basically uh, based on routing table parsing. So from any source to destination, so, so uh, for example, an application owner comes to me and say that, hey, from this data center, this host to this host, I'm facing some uh, unusual latency and <clears throat> I'm not getting uh, the desired performance that I want. So what I do is, this utility is actually based on routing table parsing. So from starting from source 
till the destination, it's going to parse the routing table. It's going to do show IP route on the source, see what are the uplinks and what are the outgoing interfaces. And it's going to parse the entire source to destination path. And it's going to create a, something called tree, a routing tree. So this routing tree, it's a data structure which has got a lot of nodes in it. And each node is a like a network device and the outgoing interfaces for that. So basically, when you look at the routing tree, you can make out like, okay, from this source to this destination, these are the possible paths that it's going to take. Like from A, it can go to B, C, D. From D, it can go to other nodes. So this tree has got the entire uh, structure of where the traffic can go from source to destination. So this uh, routing tree will have the information of all the uplinks and the outgoing interfaces from each node towards the destination IP. So this actually kinds of like goes from source to destination, parsing the routing table and creates a tree, uh, tree structure with having all the uplink and outgoing interfaces. So now, another use case is, as I said earlier, platform-based network scanning. If I want to scan all Juniper devices in my network, it can scan in just a few minutes and say, hey, so these are the issues which are found on the Juniper networks, uh, Juniper devices in your network. So, yeah. So as I said, like, uh, so you have, the, so the first step is like creation of a routing tree. So it hardly takes like one to two minutes to create the, from going from the source till the destination to create the routing tree. And the way how it does is from the source, it does show IP route for that destination IP. It finds like, okay, there are four uplink devices and I have four outgoing interfaces. Now it, what it's going to do is, it's going to parse that data. And if you look at, um, the point? yeah. So if you look, if you look this uh, show IP route data, it's passed to another function called parse data. So now parse data has got this output and it actually creates a dictionary saying that, hey, for this device, I have this outgoing interfaces, these are the uplink devices, and these are the BGP peers. So we have BGP inside DC, so uh, it's actually kind of tailored for that, uh, our network. So it shows that, uh, so each node has all this information. And all this information is gathered for all these uplink nodes. Now, you might be thinking like, uh, this, kind, this is kind of a time consuming process because you're uh, parsing the routing table. That is where the multiprocessing comes in picture. So now what we do is, all the uplink devices, they are processed parallelly. Okay, so we, uh, we use multiprocessing, uh, and all these uplink devices, since they are uh, processed parallelly, we don't see that much of uh, time, consuming, uh, time consumption in this one. And the route parsing, it is stopped when, the when you do show IP route for the destination IP, and you see it as a connected route. That is when the route parsing stops. Now, once the route parsing is stopped, the routing tree is actually passed so you have a routing tree. It actually gets passed to the uh, LI trace route main code. Now what it does is, it actually checks each node. So th this is the routing tree. Okay, from source, you have uplink devices. This is the information. Uplink device two, three, all this information till the destination. So now this uh, data structure is actually a JSON file. So this is actually passed to the LI trace route main function. And what it does is, it logs into the each device, uplink device, and sees that, okay, are there any errors, or are there any other issues? For example, if it is a Juniper, uh, are there any alarms on this device or not? So it does all ki those kinds of checks on these routing tree nodes. So now, if you see this, so, okay, so this is the uh, code where we do actually multi-processing multi using uh, map function. So, if there are any issues on any of the uplink devices, it's actually shown in a tabular format. Okay, say, hey, on this node, these are the alarms, or these are the interfaces which are having errors or discards and stuff like that. So we have separate files. So we know that uh, the key function, the key thing in Python automation is like you sh your code should be modular. So what we have done is we have separate file for Cisco, separate file for Juniper, separate for Arista. And each file has got separate functions for each checks. Like for interface errors, I'm having a separate function. For alarms, separate functions, so like that. So if you look like this, Cisco checks. Like I'm checking parity errors, link errors, and BGP flaps. So whatever issues that we can think of in a network, BGP flaps, link errors, or whatever. So we, we create a separate file for like this and so separate file for Juniper, and for every platform. And these all are called inside the LI traceroute check. So if your node is Cisco, 
only the Cisco functions get executed. If you notice Arista, only Arista functions get executed. Once this execution is done, it creates an output file and it gives you a tabular format of device issues, device issues. And now with that, you can actually make out, okay, so this device has link errors, this device has got BGB flaps, so this might be an issue. So it can point to the problematic device on your, uh, on your network based on these results. So I'll, I'll show you the sample report uh, from my network. So this is, this is when I did like uh, a scan for the entire Juniper uh, network devices in my network. So you could see like, uh, it can show like on this interface, these many are the errors or these many are the, uh, because these are based on SNMP counters, okay? So, uh, uh, so this is actually how it looks like. If, if there are any alarms, it can show you the alarms present on that device. So basically whatever uh, things you can think of a network device can give you problems with, we can actually automate using this. We can just write a simple function for that and this get executed. And it all happens within like two to three minutes. So the engineer doesn't have to like, it saves a lot of time in, uh, of engineers to like, they don't, you don't have to look at different monitoring systems to find out issues. Instead, the tool is going to look out for you, uh, look out for the issues in different tools that you have. So that's one of the use cases. Yeah, and the second use case, as I said, like if I want to scan any particular platform in my network, so all I want is like the user gives the input, like, hey, so this is the device list. And now in that device list, if it is Juniper, execute all this. If it is Cisco, execute all this. So at the end, you get a report of whatever the problems are there in the network. Yeah, so that was Li Traceroute. So, uh, so the next uh, next problem statement that I'm going to discuss is about network maintenances. So, being a network engineer, uh, I often get very tense or nervous when I'm doing any complex uh, routing changes or any complex network uh, code upgrades. So, uh, it happened once, like uh, I was doing something, and uh, after the maintenance, a default route went missing out of one of the one of the routers. I didn't notice that time. But after one hour, my manager pinged me, hey, no, I think you screwed up some things. <laughs> so outages are like kind of opportunities. So that's when we trigger, that's, that's what triggered this idea of NetSmart, that is Network uh, Simplified Maintenance and Reporting Tool. So now, you cannot, uh, uh, like maintenance are like inevitable in your network. Like you have to, you have, if you are a network engineer, you will definitely do network maintenances. But how do I make sure that it doesn't cause any outage or it can give me a peace of mind once I'm done with my maintenance? So we have we need a tool which can actually do like state check. Okay, so if these are the devices that are coming under your maintenance, what is the state right now and what is the state after your network maintenance? And are there any undesirable changes that you didn't want to, uh, but you still ha it still happened? So we we needed some kind of that notification when we do network maintenance. So. It's an in-house tool which actually tracks the changes brought by any kind of network maintenance. So it's, it's, it's really simple to use and because the user actually creates a list of network devices under maintenance and the NetSmart, it actually uh, executes a set of commands on those devices to see, okay, what are the, how the routing table looks like, how the BGP, BGP uh, neighborships looks like, LLDP and all the checks that it does and then it's stores in a JSON file. Then after that, the engineer performs the maintenance, and then when he executes NetSmart, the report will be generated saying that, hey, so these are the things that got changed after your maintenance, like these are the config that got added, or these are the config that got deleted. So you get a complete picture, a bird's eye view of the maintenance, like, okay, so these are the changes, and these are all I wanted, so I'm good. So that gives you a peace of mind when you do network maintenance. So for example, this is uh, for Juniper platform. So in Juniper, we actually capture like show BGP summary, show chassis routing engine, the configuration. I mean like whatever you can think of in Juniper are the critical parameters. We capture everything and then we store it in a JSON file. RSVP, memory, and show IP routes, and stuff like that. So similarly, we have a set, a set of commands for Cisco and Arisa, whatever platforms that we have in, a, in our network, we have a separate file for all those platforms and all the commands are written in forms of functions. So like this, for Cisco, for Juniper, 
And then all this is actually uh, imported. So netsmart.py is the main file wherein you import all those functions, okay? And when, if the device is Cisco, then okay, yeah, execute all the Cisco functions. Juniper, Juniper. So now, once you are done with that, then there is a function called JSON compare. So what happens is, like JSON 1 is the file which you do before the maintenance, and JSON 2 is the file which creates after the maintenance. So it just returns you the diff of the JSON file. And the diff something, uh, okay, so this is how the script runs, like, so it captures, like you, you can see like it's captures device configuration, MPLS, BGP, whatever critical parameters are there, it actually captures everything and saves in the file. So we use Jira uh, uh, tool for our ticketing purposes. So it what it does is it creates a JSON file and it attaches to a maintenance file uh, ticket number. So that's what it does here. Now, this is how the maintenance report looks like. You can see whatever red is what got changed. So like, uh, for example, config added. If you click on this, it's actually a hyperlink. It actually shows you what all the config you added and what all configs got removed. And BGP peer advertisement. For example, before my maintenance, I was receiving 10 routes from uh, my uplink. But my, after the maintenance, I'm receiving only five. So that also get highlighted here. So if any, uh, how are you learning the default route protocol, YBGP or whichever protocol, so it all gets highlighted over here. So now, uh, as I said, like the only, the, the biggest advantage of this is like you, you get to see any unexpected changes and you can take proactively, proactive steps in order, uh, like before it gets turned into an outage and possibly you can impact. So this, this is what it helps us. So that's NetSmart. Then, uh, Another one is device decommissioning tools. So this is what I was saying, like we had a challenge of uh, decommissioning two full-scale data centers in the least possible time. So what we did was we, uh, so uh, so we, 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 took a, we made a list of network, uh, device types in our network. We had 4, 10, 48s, uh, Nexus devices, Juniper. So what we did was like we installed each device in our lab and we uh, did the complete network decommission process like doing write arrays or wiping out the config, wiping out the VLAN information, everything in the lab device and we made sure like okay if you execute, if you, if you can do it on the lab you can just automate that using Python, okay. And once we are done with that, uh, did it change? Okay, so yeah. So uh, once we are done with that, then we started automating that. We created separate files for like Nexus, separate file for Juniper. It's like that being modular is the key. So there are times like when we have to decommission a big part of your data center, uh, and then what what we do is like sometimes the VLAN configuration doesn't get wiped out, or sometimes the right the configuration still remains there. So we want to make sure that when you decom a network device, it has to be clean. So that's that's. Uh, that's what triggered this idea of device decommissioning tool. And as I said earlier, like uh, multiprocessing is a very important piece in, in Python automation. Like when you are dealing with so many devices, you also have to make sure that this is fast. So that's how we use multiprocessing in our network. So, but this tool can be uh, fatal as well, to be very honest, because if, uh, if an engineer inputs a wrong list of devices, there are chances that a wrong list of a wrong device can get decommissioned. So in order to avoid that, we added two layer checks in this particular uh, workflow. So what happens is, when the engineer says that, hey, I want to decommission ABC devices in my network. So what it's going to do is, it's going to create a change request with that device list, and it's going to get uh, uh, to its manager's approval. When the manager approves that change request, this device will come to know, okay, next time when the engineer says, hey, I want to do this device, and this is the change request. The, uh, the, the script, what it's going to do is, it's going to check if the change request is approved or not. If it is approved, then only it's going to do the further decommissioning process. Now, when I say decommissioning process, as I said, like we had separate functions for separate platforms. So each uh, separate flap, uh, Juniper is wiped out separately, uh, Nexus is wiped out separately. So all these, uh, like you, you have, uh, so check couplings. Okay, so this is one important piece. Like when you're decommissioning a particular network device, there are certain pre-checks to be done uh, before decommissioning it. Like 
are there any active live server connections on those devices or not? How we check is like, we do LLDP and we check only the uplinks. Uh, there should not be any server ports. It should be up on the net, uh, on that particular network device. Only the uplinks should be up. So that kind of pre-check what we do on this uh, before we decommission this. And once we do that, then for each separate platform, each function is getting called up here. And then it's going to do write erase, delete VLAN file, and reload. That's it. And then after that, it's going to do a ping check. Uh, the engineer will want to verify that the device has been successfully decommissioned or not. When it, he executes again, it's going to do a ping check. And if the ping fails, that means it has been decommissioned successfully. So that's the complete workflow of the uh, device decommissioning tool. And yeah, so this really helped us in like decommissioning two full-scale data centers in very short time. OK, so yeah, open sourcing plans. So as I said, uh, these tools have helped us. Uh, so we would like to extend this to the community. So we are actually kind of abstracting the, because we are using our internal APIs also uh, to get some information. So we are trying to abstract that information and we are trying to roll out an open source code for NetSmart first of all. So because uh, NetSmart what a tool like I, I got, I get uh, messages in, on LinkedIn that, hey, are, you, are there any plans to open source this? So we have definitely plans for open sourcing this NetSmart tool first. And I'm hope, hoping that it should be out by August or September. Yep, that's it. So, thank you.